Did you know that 80% of people that attend church at least once a month say they know that sharing the gospel is important, but 61% of them still never share the gospel? Today, I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can share the gospel easily and effectively. Let's get into it. What's up everybody? My name is Justin Kessler and I'm a youth pastor in the Houston area. And today I wanna to talk about how you can actually share the gospel. We know that it's important to share the gospel, the good news of what Jesus has done for us. But the reason why we don't is because sometimes it can be really difficult. And maybe you've never had someone actually teach you a simple way that you can share the gospel. So today I wanna to take a look at a concept called the three circle. And the three circles is not new. It's not something that I came up with, but I think it is a really helpful tool that we can use to share the gospel with people. Now, I do have a little bit of beef with the three circles because I think a lot of times the three circles can be shared in a really impersonal way. So the way that I've always used the three circles is I will use the concepts from the three circles and I will share my personal story and actually incorporate those principles from the three circles. There's also something that I'm gonna draw out for you guys so that you can have a visual that actually helps you remember all of the elements of the gospel that you need to share. And so I find myself thinking of all these visual elements while I'm sharing the gospel and trying to present it so that I make sure I don't miss anything. But for me personally, I don't actually draw this out every single time. I find that whenever I share my personal story, it breaks down some barriers that a lot of people have to the gospel. And so I'm gonna teach you today how you can share your personal story and incorporate the principles from the three circles into that so you can easily and effectively share the gospel. Here's my story. I grew up with parents who were pretty successful. They wanted me to be successful too, so they pushed me to be great in everything that I did. I took that pressure and I thought that I had to be absolutely perfect. And it didn't real, really take me long to realize that I'm not perfect and not only am I not perfect, but this world is not even close to perfect. No one I've ever met is perfect. Would, would you agree that we live in a broken world? Yeah, most people would say that it doesn't take you very long to look around and realize this world is super, super broken. And that brokenness led me to being incredibly insecure. I thought I had to be perfect and I wasn't perfect. And so I just didn't know who I was and I was super insecure unless I was the best at everything. And so I tried to escape that brokenness in all kinds of ways, just like we all do. Everyone tries to escape their brokenness in some way. And what I tried that really broke me down the most was drugs and alcohol. In junior high, I started drinking and doing drugs and my drug use progressed really, really quickly. Really from the time I was 18 to 21 was in treatment centers or I was on the streets or I was sleeping on friends' couches. My life was absolutely chaotic. It was falling apart. I was lying to my best friends. I was burning bridges left and right. I couldn't hold down a job. I couldn't hold down any relationships. My life was crazy. It was out of control. And that is whenever I realized this can't be what life is about. This can't be everything. And I thought at that moment that God has to have a better plan for me. God has to have something better in store for my life than what I'm doing. And the truth is, God does have a better plan. If you remember in the beginning of the world, there was the Garden of Eden and that was perfect. Everything was perfect. God even walked with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. But Adam and Eve chose independence instead of dependence on God. And I choose that independence all the time. I've had so many times in my life whenever I've rebelled, I've done what I want instead of what God wanted. And I've chosen my own selfish desires over him over and over again. But here's the good news. The good news is that God had a plan for my life. And when I was 21, I decided I would give God an honest shot. And someone told me that Jesus left perfect heaven and came to this earth. He was fully God, he was God's son, and he 
came to this earth, he lived a perfect life, and he died on the cross to take the punishment that I deserve for my sins. He didn't deserve that punishment because he was perfect, but I deserve punishment for my sins. The Bible says that the wages, what we earn for our sins is death. But Jesus didn't want me to have to take that death on myself, so he died in my place for my sin and my disobedience. And then he rose again. And the Bible says that if I choose to put my trust in him as my savior and my king, not just someone who saves me, but he is the boss. He is my king. He is my Lord. He is the one who I follow no matter what. If I do that, then he will give me forgiveness and a brand new life. And God no longer looks at my sins. I'm right with him. Back to how it was in the beginning. So I chose to follow Jesus and have never looked back. My life has been completely different since the moment I gave it to Jesus. Now, I still struggle and I have sins that I'm still dealing with. I have habits that I'm still trying to move past. But the truth is, I overcame tons of fears and insecurities and anxiety and depression and now get to live in complete freedom. Instead of being addicted to drugs because of my insecurities and my fears, I am living with peace and hope and I'm living in freedom as a completely new person. And because of what God has done in my life, it's my mission to tell people what God did. And I do that because I believe that he can do the same thing in your life as well. So I just shared my personal story and showed you guys what the three circles diagram looks like, but I wanna actually walk through the three circles diagram and what everything on there means so that we don't leave anything out important in the gospel presentation. So let's take a look at this. So first, this represents that God made a perfect world, right? The Garden of Eden, everything was perfect but we chose to disobey the lord we chose to do our own thing and we left and because of that this world is now broken and so this circle is broken and because of this brokenness we search for meaning and significance in all kinds of different ways and we all have our own personal brokenness and so i write out in my personal story all the different ways that i have personally experienced brokenness but then you talk about how that wasn't god's plan that God actually had a better plan and he sent Jesus to come down to this earth. He died on the cross and he rose again. Hey, future Justin here. As I was doing this, I forgot a very important part of the gospel. Uh, so if you take a look at this right here, this arrow is supposed to be inside this circle. And that is a symbol. This arrow pointing down is showing that Jesus is coming back one day. And so that's a very important part of sharing the gospel that Jesus is coming back for us one day. So don't forget that. Put it in that circle. Okay, back to past Justin. And if we choose, this little guy over here is praying to make that decision to put his trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I draw the crown because that resembles that he's not just a Savior, but he's also the King. He's the boss. He's the Lord. And because of that, we are given brand new life. So this little man right over here is given brand new life. He's jumping for joy. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then because we have put our trust in Jesus and what he has done, we put our faith in him, we become a brand new creation and we enter back into what was an originally created for us. And whenever we've experienced that, we go back into this broken world to save our friends. And so if you have done that and you've kind of presented the gospel to people, there's really only a few ways that someone could respond. They could reject it. And if they reject it, don't take it personally. God's job is to change hearts. The Holy Spirit transforms lives, not us. It's our job to present the message of Jesus, the good news, and the Holy Spirit does the rest. So if they reject it, say, hey, I'm here for you. If you have questions, let me know, but don't take it personally and you just move on. The second thing that someone could do is they could show interest. 
If they show interest, I would encourage you to start to pray for them. Start to invite them to maybe read the Bible with you. Maybe you walk through the book of John together, or maybe you start in John and walk all the way through the New Testament together, and you read the Bible together, you let them ask questions, and you really start that discipleship process. Discipleship happens long before someone ever actually has a conversion and they start to follow Jesus. And so you're starting to already disciple that person whenever they start to show interest. And then the other thing that they could do is they could accept that message right then and there. They could say, I want to follow Jesus. And you can let them know Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that's it. It's that simple. And so if they believe that, then they're saved right then and there on the spot. And you could just pray a simple prayer with them like, God, thank you so much for saving my friend. And I pray the Holy Spirit, you would help them to live the life that you've called them to live. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be some crazy specific prayer that you've heard in churches. The prayer does not save you. It is the confession that Jesus is Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead that saves you. And so if you do that with your friend, continue to walk with them, continue to support them. And now you take them under your wing and you disciple them on that process. And you show them how they can love Jesus the way that you love Jesus. Well, if you like this video, I want you to share it. This is a message that so many people need to hear. The church hardly knows how to share the gospel, and this is the most important message that we have to share. So please get this out to friends who might find it beneficial. And if you enjoyed this video, like, I really does help the algorithm. So like this video and subscribe. If you wanna see more content like this, I put it out as often as I possibly can. Hope you guys have a great week. See you in the next video. Peace.